Solo runs in video games are very cool, but do you know what else is very cool? This thing right here. So without further delay, let's get into it. Now the first thing I need to do is inherit every skill from all my previous runs of the game, all of which I've used Lysithia in. But you're probably thinking to yourself, 5 points in a run like this isn't using New Game Plus kinda cheap, and while normally I would agree with you, please consider the following. <laughs> So now that you've taken a moment to consider that Lysithia wasn't really meant to take hits, especially on Maddening Mode, which is what this is, this is a Maddening Mode Lysithia solo run, um... Alright, so uh, we're gonna Wrath Advantage Chapter 1, so while that's in the background I just thought I'd lay it down for you. Okay, so Lysithia will be the only combatant, the only one to do combat in this entire run. I will use Dancers, so I did set Hilda as my adjutant for this chapter, since some things in Three Houses are just more convenient that way, and uh, it's consistent with all my other solo runs. Like, if you watch my Mathis stuff, or my Lex solo that I streamed that one time, I always used Dancers. So as long as Lysithia does all the actual things, that's fine. Same with Gambits. Two, this isn't just a solo run. I am going to try to get every class skill I physically can, and also max out every weapon rank, and also cap magic. This is gonna be, this is gonna be, this is not only gonna be the Lysithia solo, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be the best Lysithia solo you've ever done seen. This is gonna be the best Lysithia, period. And with that, uh, with the way I sped up the footage. Well, actually, like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. I'm doing this video a lot more fast-paced. I already provided actual content before I said like, comment, and subscribe. Usually I do these long-winded intros, but seriously, if you like my channel or anything, I have other videos. Mathis, if you like solos, there's Mathis. But yeah, like, comment, blah, 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 blah. This will get more interesting than Wrath Vantage. I do some funny stuff with Gauntlets later on. And with that, this should be the prologue where you uh, beat up Hannah Man, Manuela, and everyone else. So one thing we need to address immediately is the capped magic goal, because normally Lysithia's capped magic is 86, and with the goddess statues, that's like 91, so usually this is a very unobtainable thing, so we'll have to use everything in our power to do it, and what's in our power to do it? Well, the yellow flowers, but we don't have access to the yellow flowers yet, so what do we do in the now? Well, if you go inside the amiibo gazebo, and you reset, you can well, you can soft reset to get stat boosters, and I, in the early game, farm very frequently for stat boosters. I won't show you, like, footage of it, I'll show you me doing it just this once, and during the end of month reports, and you'll ask yourself, like, Oh, how did her magic get that big? She only got, like, one level this month. Well, that, well, there you go, I did this. If we're getting to 91 magic folks, we gotta employ all of the cheap methods. For the first few months of teaching, I focus on swords, so she can unlock Soul Blade or whatever it's called, a magical combat art that uses swords. And as you can imagine, a magical combat art with Lysithia's magic stat would be good. I try to start off the chapter pretty conservatively, you know, uh, just try to take on one enemy at a time because Lysithia isn't, you know, bulky yet, so... <laughs> And getting into vantage range is right now is very hard, you know, Wrath Vantage since she only has 22 HP. So if she, like, doesn't cross the line and then she gets hit by the next hit, she just dies. But that doesn't really work out since that means all those guys come down to where Cloud and Violet are, which is obviously a no-go. So eventually I just have to charge her forward and pray on a miss in, like, the first turn. Now, Wrath Vantage is cool, but there's something that's actually even harder to get and is actually necessary to clear this consistently, which is Defiant Crit. So, like, you need to be below 25% HP, and at base Lysithia, that's, like, 4 HP. So I had to, like, choose a specific battalion, so she would have the exact amount to live on, like, 1 or 2 HP, which luckily I had access to because New Game Plus, but still. Because you're probably noticing that her magic isn't high enough yet, even though I farmed, like, a Spirit Dust in the Amiibo Gazebo. Like, still not high enough to one-shot. We'll reach that point eventually, but for now, we really just have to rely on these crits if we're gonna get anywhere, but eventually I do get the right amount of health, so that just lets me charge forward, and it's actually cool that since I got it to level 5 in chapter 1, or like whatever you want to call it, month 1, I was able to expand double her spell slots. So like usually a frustrating part of training her in this chapter is that, oh, she only has a couple, like she's not level 5 so she doesn't have access to a magic class so she can't use a lot of magic. It makes Lysithia very frustrating to train in the early game, but since we bypassed that by making her level 5 before this, this gets us all the magic we need for this. In a chapter that's coming up, that won't be enough, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there, 
and she's able to kill Kostas pretty quickly, and let's look at how she is by the end of this month. After escorting our 15-year-old mass murderer through some definitely haunted areas, we hit the grind. Now, an important thing to note about grinding in this run is that you've noticed that Lysithia is level 9 by now, and the enemies aren't going to scale to her level since she keeps going up and up and up, and obviously since we're on Maddening, that means the EXP will diminish even further. So how will we consistently level her up? Well, if you have online turned on, you can go to those little golden circles on the map and gain a certain percentage of EXP every time you visit one, and it doesn't scale. You'll always get, like, the same percentage of EXP, which is how we are going to consistently get Lysithia levels in this run. And these appear on main maps too, I just thought I'd point them out now on the grinding maps since they pertain to EXP. As for the chapter itself, I'm afraid, ladies and gents, that I really don't have much to report because, you know, I'm just one unit, moving through the land, going on my adventure, do to do Lysithia, and then Thunder Catherine's like, nope, I'm gonna actually kill everyone on the whole map, so uh, I'm glad I grinded this month, otherwise Lysithia wouldn't have grown that much. Like, if you see the footage, I, I was barely even to get, barely even able to get to Lord Lanata on time. If there wasn't, like, another unit in range there that Catherine went after, I don't think I would have even been able to get, to get him. So, you know, again, this chapter... Uh, it's still a Lysithia solo since Catherine is a green unit, but I can't say that Lysithia had to work very hard this chapter, and, uh, here's how she is by the end of the month. Since she's level 12 now, I can start getting, you know, a lot of the classes, and I'll need to get all the classes to get all the class skills later, so I may as well start working on that now. As for teaching, now that she has Soul Blade, I decided to focus primarily on Lances, mostly because I think it'll be impossible to train her in them in Part 2, since the enemies get so much stronger and there's no, like, Leaven Sword or Bolt Axe or, like, Radiant Bow for lances, so for the entirety of part one, I really try to get lances to uh, S+. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, may I humbly present the funny. No, but seriously, this is a pretty simple chapter. Once the Death Knight uh, doesn't death me, you know, it's in the name. I go up the left route since the left route actually has Spirit Dust, which gets us, you know, too closer to our goal of 91. Now that I think about it, 91 might actually be the highest stat in the game period. If you're a Three Houses freak, I guess, let me know in the comments, because uh, I don't know. You think I look up other characters in this game besides Lysithia? Anyway, uh, so I go up the left. I do have to keep Byleth and Claude out of range of the reinforcements a bit. They kind of get sandwiched, so I do have to kind of worry about that, and I do get a bit cocky with the boss. Remember, I want to get my lance rank up. I want to get it really up all the way to S+, plus. so I try to, you know, do that on the boss, but oh no, oh no, I get crit, and I die, and you can see me just trying to get lance rank any way I can here, because, you know, with Mastermind, it should be smooth, even though Lysithia hardly gains any EXP in it, because, you know, it's, a uh, I want to say it's called a Bane in Three Houses, where you don't learn it fast, but anyway, yeah, I do end up just killing the boss with magic, and that is that. But of course, here's how she looks after this month's training. I unlock tea parties this month, which is very important since you can use them to raise your unit's charm stat. However, Lysithia doesn't feel like doing them for the entire month, so I guess we'll just put that off. I should note that on grinding maps, I alternate between Byleth and Claude for adjutants, because, uh, you know, there's that Hunting by Daybreak map, that's very hard, so they need to be not terrible combatants for that, like that's gonna be the one time we, this isn't gonna be a Lysithia solo since she's literally not in that map at the start. And also it's good for reclassing, like in a paralogue that's coming up, I'm gonna want Byleth to be a flyer, and you know, so on and so forth. This month I also finally unlock yellow flower seeds, which is very, very important because you put them in the greenhouse, and what do you get when you put them in the greenhouse? You get plus one magic stat boosters nearly every time. It's not plus two like the amiibo gazebo, but that means I don't have to waste, you know, 20 minutes of my life at a time resetting in the amiibo gazebo until I get a spirit dust to, you know, uh, get consistent magic growth. So, at the end of the month reports, you'll probably be noticing a less of a dramatic magic increase, but honestly, uh, it'll... <laughs> It's worth it for the time save alone, honestly, and my sanity. As for the chapter itself, I used the Soul Blade technique to save on magic, which will be really, really important near the end. You'll see, you'll appreciate that I saved my magic uses. Uh, but then also Gilbert decides that living is a bad idea, and after I deal with Gilbert's failure, I move on to one of the yellow experience circles that lures over an archer, and once you know it, attracting that archer causes every single well, almost, almost every single 
enemy in the chapter to move, which means Lysithia has to do some tricky maneuvering to actually deal with all this nonsense, plus there's the ambush reinforcements, and some of the enemies use gambits. It's a real heck of a time, I'm sure you're seeing it now, but in the end, we, uh, you know, we walk up to McClon, punch him, and then the fun thing happens. Luckily for me, when McClon turns into a beast, uh, if you go down beneath his area, he actually won't attack you. And because I, you know, new gamed plus and got my white magic to plus one, I can actually, as you're seeing, just kind of snipe him from outside the range, just kind of tick at him. And I think I actually come down to only one Seth frame left, and that's, you know, the one that's effective against monsters. And I think I was kind of out of most of my other magic since I just had to defeat all of those enemies. So... Learning Soul Blade really came in handy this chapter to deal with those first few enemies. So yeah, that's nice. But also I would like to point out that in the cutscene, because I didn't skip all the cutscenes in this, I wanted to see Three Houses Story again in case I want to form an opinion on it for a video later or something. But um, in the cutscene, Claude or someone says, Oh, he's gone feral. He doesn't recognize anyone anymore. Blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't kill that white mage, his healer. And you know what? That makes me think, you know? That Claude's either stupid or the writers are stupid. You can pick. But anyway, <laughs> so we deal with that, and here's how she's looking by the end of this month. This month, Lysithia actually feels like attending tea parties, which is very, very good, which means I can slowly but surely increase her charm. And you know, if I'm making the best Lysithia possible, even though I really only want a cap of magic, that's my goal. May as well get as many stats as you can. Speaking of magic, my agricultural efforts are going very very well now that I'm starting to get premium magic herbs. Which of course, as I said earlier, will increase Lysithia's magic by one every time I get one. As for the chapter itself, there's not really too much going on here. I mean, it's just your usual Wrath Vantage stuff. Like, I don't need to really conserve on magic, there's not that many enemies. But I would say I'm actually punished for doing a solo run in this chapter, unlike the other chapters, because I can't actually get the move ring. Uh, because, like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna warp someone there and they're gonna beat the enemy guarding it? No, because then it's not a solo run. Duh, idiot. But also, last chapter and this chapter, we're starting to reach a critical mass where her magic is now so high that I don't really even need to rely on crits to deal with these guys anymore. Like, Fire Emblem solo runs, if you've, like, watched my Mathis and my Lex runs, at first they started super sucky, because the game's not balanced around that, but eventually they get so much EXP, and all the stat boosters where it's like, tink, 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 the enemy's just like, oh, what do we do? They just one-shot us. So we're starting to reach that point in this run, and with all that being said, here's how she's looking by the end of this month, so you can see her magic for yourself. Of course, the next phase in my master plan is to defeat Lorenz's Twitter rival in order to obtain Lysithia's birthright. And of course, there's no better way to obtain one birthright than by using another birthright. So let's see that in action. Leave it to me. Who are you? I'd appreciate it if you... You're in my way! <laughs> <laughs> Still a long way to go. Right you are, Lysithia, but at least now we've got the thing. Also, this month I noticed that Cyril will just like straight up stare at Lysithia from behind these bushes. So you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know? <laughs> you really have to wonder what's going through uh you really have to wonder what's going through Cyril's head here. As for the Battle of the Eagle and Lion, I decided to show off Lysithia's new powers in full force. One, she reached level 20 during her training, so she can become a Dark Flyer, meaning she can fly and use magic. Thank you, Koei Tecmo Intelligent Systems, for just not having that be in the base game like it was in Awakening. You could kind of say it was in the base game in Fates like it was a path bonus, but like most people bought all the paths anyway, so like, it's kind of a base class if you like, stretch the definition a little bit, but no, in Three Houses they were like, nah. Hey, if you want to fly and use magic. But you know what? I did. I did. I don't even like Cindered Shadows, but like, <laughs> that's besides the point. Show off the new power. I immediately just go cook Bernadetta, go to the right, cook the blue lions. They're all killing each other. Doesn't really affect me. One touch Dimitri. Go to the left. One touch Edelgard. And of course, of course, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, can't forget I showed off fires too. I sniped Bernadetta earlier from a very far away. I don't even need the range up skills anymore. So I go and I fight Edelgard. Fun, 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 fun in the sun. And then of course I experience every Fire Emblem Three Houses player's 
favorite thing in the world, missing against Petra into immediate death. Luckily though, with some divine turn wheels, we managed to recover, and here's the end of the month report. This month I got two very important tools in the form of the Experience Gem and the Knowledge Gem from both Manuela's and Byleth's chapters. During both their chapters, I of course just made Manuela and Byleth flyers so they could just go screw off into a corner somewhere, but the Byleth chapter actually came very, very close because of the flying monster reinforcements. I of course had to make Byleth and Claude retreat. So like, when by the time I was gonna hit the final boss, they are like one turn away from being snapped out of existence. So that was actually very tense. As for the chapter itself, it's kind of business as usual now, you know, Fire, Stark Flyer, Wrath, Vantage, get them all. However, there was a very funny interaction, like, because I'm doing this with one unit, it obviously takes longer, right? So Geralt and Solon actually got to fight, which usually doesn't happen. So, like, right, it turns out they can't kill each other. If they try to fight each other, they'll just tink each other down to 1 HP, and their battle will be infinite, truly. Truly, they are both gods among men. And of course, here's the end of the month report. Now at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, Alright, five points, I've seen that you can beat a level with Wrath Vantage Thyrus, now show me something real, show me something juicy. Well, remember, earlier in the video I said I really, really want to get my Lance rank really high up before the end of part one, and Lysithia's strength is so big now that I can actually do damage. Now you probably saw some of the end of month reports and were like, okay, her defense jumped up like 10 stages at once, her strength jumped up like 20 stages at once. Is this, is this guy hacking in stat boosters? No. So how it works is since I got her level so high, I could get the advanced classes sooner. And what you do is if you reclass into a class, they have like a minimum strength and a minimum defense. So you can actually like have it be tolerable and that just trans like tolerable in that class, I mean and that just transfers over to your base stats. So like between two end of the month's reports, you are wondering, okay, her defense is what now? That's how it got that way. So now since we're at such a point where I've given her stat boosters, I've given her classes that automatically increases her strength and defense, it's like, okay, now it's on. Even though still like for a skill in this map, I had to equip, you know, weight minus five and darting blow because her strength still isn't that big. She's still gonna get weighed down by things. But yeah, this is the Sedith and Flame Paralog, and I equipped a class I hadn't mastered yet, and I have the Knowledge Gem equipped. I've been grinding in maps where it's like, okay, because she has Mastermind and the Knowledge Gem, in just one grind map, not even a Paralog like this, just one grind map, she can master classes. You're gonna see at the end, because this is gonna be like part one or two, since like, I don't got all the time in the world, like how many classes she's mastered, and it's gonna be like, a lot. It's gonna be most of them. And with that, this has been the uh, Sedith Paralog, so let's get on to the actual chapter. So experienced Three Houses players probably, I mean, well, probably actually, actually know that Geralt really loves dying on this chapter. He'll just charge headfirst into the monsters and die. So I employed a combination of, you know, Flane and Hilda to just rescue and then dance Flane and then just get him out of there. And of course, Lysithia was going around the map, just boom, 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 killing all those monsters. But it still came very, very close. He almost died. Like if Lysithia was just like a tile off or like a turn off, he would have killed himself. So now that we've extended all that effort to protect a Geralt and save him from these beasts and stop ourselves from getting a game over as a result of his death, let's check out that mission end cutscene. Well, he's gone, but hey, at least we're still here to give end of the month reports. As for this month, I, you know, do the usual magic and charm increasing exercises, and actually I do get a lot done in terms of grinding this month. Now that I have the knowledge gem, of course, Lysithia's personal skill mastermind, as I said, one grind map equals one skill, so you can see here I do Thief, I do Cavalier, I do Dragon Rider, and you can actually see that um, by the end, I actually master all the classes, well not I, she, Lysithia, Lysithia masters, all of the non-DLC classes that uh, also aren't the level 30 classes. So that's a very, very good milestone. As for the chapter itself, it's kind of easy once you deal with all the enemies uh, that are up front. You can kind of just fly and go like boop Kranya, and then you get your turn back. However, we do, uh, <laughs> we do run into something very unfortunate as even with a stride from Byleth, I'm, well, she's just one range off from hitting Solon, so like Byleth will just get annihilated and attacked, which breaks the rules of the run. So I just kind of go up and pray, pray with all my heart that Solon attacks first. And once you know it, he does, ladies and gentlemen. He actually does attack first. That's always an annoying thing. Like in Conquest, uh, if you get Takumi down to like 10 health or whatever, like, he, like five other guys attack before him. Like I think all the top half guys 
attack before him, but not the bottom half ones that are actually near him. So it's always an annoying thing when it's a kill boss map and they don't attack first, but luckily that ain't a problem here. And so, here's how she is by the end of the month. This month, however, I learned some very, very, very interesting information, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you, why don't you believe me here? Okay, so I was just doing my class skills, you know, for the DLC classes, and I find out that this class called War Cleric is actually the only female class that has, you know, the skill that boosts Gauntlet by 5 attack. And I'm just having the time of my life punching people out, punching people out with my spike dress. Like, I don't know what the dress is, like, it's like a wireframe but it's got, it's got like spikes on it near the end and it's just so cool and it lets women punch people which is something I've been wanting for a while like in my only Black Eagles run I made Bernadetta a boxer so ladies and gentlemen I have a dream I need Lysithia to punch Edelgard it's not a hope or a solitary dream I need to it's like a hunger Edelgard so I equip Deathblow to give her punches some extra you know punch deal with the rest of the enemies as you normally would I let actually all the crest stone guys get away cuz hey ladies and gentlemen just hey what are you gonna do about it what are you gonna do they take the crest stones and the rewards kinda suck anyway I mean you get a knowledge gem but you already get one of those anyway and it's only a one person run so it's not actually like I needed to in the first place and with that here we go You wish to interfere, then your life. So, the end has come. Is this some sick joke? The Flame Emperor is actually Edelgard? And just like that, Edelgard can consider herself punched. And of course, here's the end of the month report. This month, I finally bust out the DLC items, because to be perfectly honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, to be perfectly honest, even though Claude is level 25, and I've been using him as an adjutant in some of my grinding maps, I don't quite think he's ready for what's to come next in this run, where he actually has to do combat and hunting by daybreak, and, you know, two of the hardest maps in all of Fire Emblem are coming up. So, you know, <laughs> we're going to want to be prepared for that. Other than that, it's just our usual magic gardening and charm raising until the battle with Edelgard. Before our final fight with Edelgard for this half of the solo run, why don't we reflect on how far Lysithia has come so far. As for the map itself, Hanuman actually dodges like four Brave X hits in a row, so geez, what is it with NPCs in this run? It's like Catherine steals my entire flow in that one chapter. Well, I guess Gilbert sucks, so Gilbert still sucks, ladies and gentlemen, but Hanuman's got the moves. But anyway, we go down, 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 down. You know the drill by now, Wrath, Vantage Thyrus, and eventually we make our way to Edelgard, and we hit her with the magic. And spoodly doo doodly doo, Byleth falls down a hole, and that's this half of the run. And that's all, folks. Obviously, there's gonna be a part two. I was gonna make it all one video originally, but like, turns out three houses actually takes a really long time to beat, and I recently got a front end intern job, so I can't just like play this game during the day in between school work like I usually would uh, for videos like this. So, you know, that's that. But hey, if you do like it, uh,. Comment, like, and subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. Compared to my other solo runs, I tried to put more, like, editing and jokes into this one. Like, if you watch my Mathis solo, I'm just like, okay, here's this chapter, here's what happens. But in this one, I did, like, the Lorenz Twitter rival joke, I did the Theor, I did the Cyril thoughts joke. So I really hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you look forward to the, uh, second half of the run. It's probably gonna be a while, as I said. I, uh, I'm just starting a job, so I still need to acclimate to that. I'll probably start streaming again soon. And, uh, one more thing before we go, check out my other Lysithia video. I don't think YouTube likes it when I bring it up, which is why I saved it for the end of this 20-minute video. Okay, bye!